Welcome to the Jennifer J. Hammond Podcast. Jennifer is a licensed realtor, educator, speaker, and best-selling author. Jennifer's goal is to help you find your yay in every day. Jennifer is grateful for the opportunity to educate, empower, and inspire you with powerful conversations, insights, and new viewpoints. Here's your host, Jennifer J. Hammond. This is Jennifer Hammond, and I know I'm Jennifer J. Hammond, which, you know, I'm always looking to find a yay in every day. And I'm so excited about our next guest. This is so much fun because we always need those practical skills and cyber issues being hacked is such a big problem right now. And so many of us just feel very vulnerable at home. So we're gonna talk about all sorts of this. So Sandra Aesop, she's an award, um, she's an author and award-winning and international bestseller series, Happily Ever Cyber. So welcome, Sandra. Thank you, Jennifer, and yay that we're together. I'm so excited. Yay is one of my favorite words, too. <laughs> yay! I'm so glad, because that's what I think. I always want to see how many people we can say yay in every day and just keep spreading that around, because Absolutely. it has, and especially this last year has been really challenging. So mm -hmm. it's so much fun. But let's go ahead. Let's start from the beginning for you. It's really important to understand your story and how did you end up in the, the cyber world? You know, I, I know it's a very personal story, but I appreciate you sharing. Absolutely. Thank you for, for asking that. And, you know, Jennifer, when I was 11 years old, I was evicted from my home. And right after that, I was physically bullied. And I remember at 11 years old that I promised myself that I will choose happiness no matter what, because we are the architects of our own lives. And, you know, that I, I live in a, in a very in extreme poverty and I built a career in technology and it was very successful. And in 2005, an American company that I was working for relocated me and my family to the Midwest. So, you know, we moved uh, in, in, in that first year, besides getting used to the winter in, in, in the Midwest from Venezuela, 80 degrees all year round to winterland. Um, I also something else happened and I went to visit my mom. My mom lived in Colombia and I was in the plane. I was on my way back and the captain announces that Homeland Security officers were boarding the plane, Jennifer. Wow. So I handed my passport with my work visa. I mean, I just came to the country. I'm under this working visa. And next thing I know, I'm the only one that is being marched off the plane by Homeland Security officers, oh. two of them. And of course, you know, we get to the room, you know, that famous room. And I don't know what's happening, Jennifer. My husband is waiting for me in Chicago. And, and I'm about to miss my connecting flight. So 10 hours later, I handed back my passport and it's revoked. And, you know, a few weeks later, I'm back in Venezuela. I'm trying to get a new visa and... And the officials kept asking me questions about China. Like, why were you in China? Who do you know in China? Who's your contact? And I'm like, I don't know. I've never been in China. Like, I, was, I didn't know why they were talking about that. Um, but yet somehow a smuggler, I call them cyber monsters. A smuggler in China got a hold of my information and he was, or she was smuggling women into the U.S. using my identity. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's uh, horrifying. Yes, it happened. And, you know, it, it, sometimes we think about identity theft, the information we lose. I mean, as a realtor, of course, there are so many transactions that you have, you know, money, I mean, wires and all of that is so important. But also when you are a victim either of cybercrime or identity theft, there is a, an emotional 
charge. I mean, this is devastating. And that event in particular almost broke my marriage, my career, my mental health. And, um, you know, for six years, I have to prove that I was a real me over and over. Mm. Um, so anyway, that's, you know, that's part of my why. And later when I, you know, everything got resolved, I, I had the privilege to enter the cybersecurity world and really understand what happened to me and how all everything click, 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 click. And I found the answers I was looking for. And, you know, it, I had a corporate career and three years ago, I decided this is what I need to do. You know, back to that story, choosing happiness, you know, I decided I, it's time for me to choose that again. And here I am. And take control back because I feel like when you get hacked and when you're, especially when your identity gets hacked, and I mean, on such an incredible way, it's being violated in a way that is, I don't know if there's even words to explain it. I mean, I've had small hacks that are still incredibly upsetting and incredibly frustrating. And as you know, and we're going to discuss the real estate industry in general is really, really um, Mm -hmm. vulnerable to just hackers from left to right, whether you're a real estate agent, your home buyer, home seller, it's just, it's all around us in a, in a way that can make you feel like you're living in this dangerous environment. And so you have to be able to take back your power and say, I can do something about it. And I'm not just going to be lost in this sea of confusion. And so I commend you for deciding to step into, I'm going to say your light and perhaps maybe even your purpose. Maybe that's one of the main things you were supposed to come and, and help other people this lifetime. Because we Absolutely. certainly need it. Absolutely. Love. I mean, beautiful how you say it, because that's exactly, you know, the case. I think every situation that happened for us, it's just prepare, prepare us to what we're meant to do. And I'm grateful now that everything that happened from my childhood all the way to now, um, prepare me for this mission. And I'm so honored to do it and, yeah. and to change the perception, Jennifer, because sometimes to your point, you know, if we live in fear, fear paralyzes us. Right. And right. doesn't help if, you know, it's taking control, it's taking charge, it's, you know, being empowered to, to take the actions. And I, I believe is I call it cyber safety. Like when we were kids, we learned to cross the street. Like it's so in nature, part of our nature. We don't really have to look both sides. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because it's, yeah, exactly. We, we do it in a way that we know it's the right thing to do. And cyber safety, because of the way we are, because technology is part of everything, has to come to be that second nature and to be that that connection that we have personally. And yeah, so that's my mission. So I'm, I'm super excited and, oh, and thank I'm you so for grateful. inviting me. We need you. We need you. And so let's start. Uh, one of the things that, you know, as real estate agents, I'm licensed as a real estate agent in Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, but I'm also a real estate investor. So this impacts us Mm -hmm. in so many different levels, and especially as real estate agents, we're constantly told to get onto social media and, you know, put your listings up there, put your this on the houses and this and that. And again, you know, even, and I think you'll relate to this. And when you talk about your safety of looking left and looking right, some of those basic things, you know, and, and God bless my grandmother. She, she's no longer with us, but One of her things when I first got into real estate, she used to send me clippings from the newspaper and I can giggle about it because I was like, why are you doing that? She would send me these clippings from um, real estate agents who were raped or murdered at an open house. And I was just like, you're not helping the situation, grandmommy. And I used to give her a hard time about it, but I'm so glad she made me aware because there's more Mm -hmm. than one time that... I know the awareness, again, made me look left, look right, so to speak, in that safety measures I took because she came from, a, you know, she came from Poland and unfortunately concentration camps and terrible, terrible, mm-hmm. terrible. We won't go down that side street. But the thing is, is that it made me realize is that as real estate agents and, you know, part of what she used to say to me is, 
you're going into a lot of times a house that's either vacant or nobody else is in there except for you. And then you advertise to everybody, including all the bad guys. Hey, I'm going to be hanging out in this house for a couple hours all by myself. You want to come visit? And it, it just, you put yourself, and I say that because then you translate that onto online with real estate. And now we get into a cyber world where, again, you're putting yourself into vulnerable situations just yeah. because that's part of, you know, the regular things that are done in real estate. So here's the question on your social media. Oh my gosh. What happens if you get hacked? What can you do? Yeah. I mean, I may thank you for, for all the information that you provided and wow about, you know, kudos to your grandma for, for that awareness. And um, I, I have a, I, I call it the I am system, intentional, aware, and mindful. And we can talk about that in a minute, but it's just, I, it's so beautiful how your grandma influenced you and created that awareness for you. Yeah. Um, you know, when you think about social media, um, definitely, you know, how, how intentionally we are with what we include. It's so important. It's how much personal information you share. And you just gave beautiful examples of, I'm in this house, I'm by myself. Here I am. Um, so there, there are ways where you could be safer. So you could advertise, but you don't have to give specifics. You can take from your social media accounts, the location services, because sometimes that's tie. Now I know exactly where you are at a given time. So that is going to be, you know, one super easy trick that you can just go to your social media and go to your privacy and, and security settings and remove being physically located. So, you know, even though you show a house, it doesn't necessarily have to be displayed where it is. Right. Right. Now, now what, what can you do or how, how do you know if even your account is being hacked? I think that's, you know, you asked me that and mm. there are signs and um, I love what you said, um, Jennifer, you know, being aware, being aware of what those signs are going to be yeah. super important because you're going to see probably that either there are posts that you'd never created or friends are maybe reaching out to you saying, hey, you know, you're sending me, you're friending me over or what's going on here. So if, if you get those messages, don't ignore them. I mean, that will be one. Just be aware that when your account has signs that somebody else is there, just pay that, you know, pay full attention to it and take that action. Yeah. And I think, you know, being mindful of where you are with your social media and how how you use your passwords, how you protect them. Do you use the same password for all your accounts? Because Ooh, if I hack, if I hack one, I can hack all of them. And yeah. there's so many stories where, you know, we sometimes think, okay, social media is not that important. It's not my bank account. The reality is it's a piece of information about you that someone can use to impersonate you right. and to harm others. I mean, there are so many scams. Fake realtors can be, you know, taking your place and pretending to be you. I mean, the, the, the risks are the spectrum of, of risks that you face in the real estate business is so broad. And that's why yeah. that intention, that awareness and that mindfulness is going to really pay off um, in everything you do in social media. Yeah. And I think it, awareness is, is key in everything, including all the technology we have at home. Because I know that one thing that's been talked about, I mean, on all the national things as well, and people ask me all the time about, are those doorbell video cameras? So mm -hmm. what is your opinion on that? Should you have one or should you just go back to the old fashioned? You know, the, 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 there is that fine line between what's convenient because sometimes that doorbell also can capture if someone is trying to get into your neighborhood, into right. your house. And you, we actually, um, it happened a couple couple days ago in my neighborhood. Someone's um, car was stolen and all the doorbells, cameras 
were kind of used to to track who was that car or who's that car and they actually caught the guy so Mm -hmm. some of the security cameras were very helpful so i will say you know using technology tools can definitely be a benefit in our lives i use them but i make sure that there are certain things in place that can protect me. So if if I have a security system, it's probably going to be a little bit different than my Wi-Fi, my regular Wi-Fi. Mm. Because, you know, if something gets hacked in my security camera, it won't have access to my other uh, network. Um, It's how much, like if I'm not using something, I will disconnect it. That's simple. And I think, you know, sometimes we, we let, things on for a long time whether that is in social media and we never close the apps in social media we have them and if someone steals your phone what's going to happen is they can get access to your social media profiles right away um especially if if, you know there is a a password that, that your phone is no password protected or you don't have a face recognition or anything so just things like that could be super easy to to remediate and back to your question on the doorbell i will say just you know use the tools but be mindful to keep them updated to don't have the same type of password and and protecting that information yeah absolutely i think it's it's really important as you said mindfulness of really understanding but i love this system of having two systems one why because if they hack in their wi-fi then they can get into everything but you have two different systems. And I've known a few people who have two or three, and, and not only for security reasons, but also because if one goes out, then you have a backup. And we're doing so much work from yep. home now. Um, it, you know, it could be, it could have, you know, multiple benefits. But I also know that before we run out of time, I want to make sure we talk about you recently have sold and purchased a new home. And so oh, yeah. I would love for you to talk about some of the ways to stay safe when you're mm-hmm. selling or when you're buying, we're in the middle of a pandemic in year 2021. Yep. I can't believe it's still 2021 already. And we're still in this pandemic. And but we still need to really think about not only safety from the pandemic, but safety, cyber safety when you're yep. buying, because now we're using more cyber things than we've ever used before. So let's talk about what would you recommend? Yeah, I will say, you know, as a buyer or or as a Seller, you know, having that relationship with your agent is going to be so important. And as your agent, knowing that the validation is going to be so key. Like I, with my agent, I was always like, did you send, did you really send me this email? And especially right. with the wire transactions, oh, because right. there are so many different um, ways that I can copy that, you know, you put a sign in your, in your, in your jar that your house is for sale. Now everyone knows it's for sale yeah. and it's for this particular real estate. So it's easy to go and mimic or kind to impersonate that, you know, that particular realtor. And when the transaction it's at the end of the transaction, when that wire transfer, you know, the money change happens I think it's so important just to do that validation just super simple not really it it takes five minutes to just say hey do you really send me this message I'm here with you and if it's a docu sign or any other electronic form just validate that Um, because easily someone can impersonate those messages and whether you are the realtor, you're the seller, you're the buyer, you know, it's not it's not going to be a, a good experience for neither of the parties. Yeah, I agree. I think it's really important. I always, when I'm doing any kind of electronic anything, but also with wire transfers, one of the things I say mm-hmm. to my clients is, is go ahead and don't do anything on the email. Go ahead and do the old fashioned, pick up the phone, call a law firm, call the bank, do everything either in person. I know it's a pandemic, but in person or with phone call. 
and not yep. doing it over a text message or an email because it is so easy for the hackers to just change one little letter one and then next thing you know, the whole thing is, is just just crazy. What about international internet, internet browsers? Is there any kind of tips you have for what people can do when they're buying and selling, especially? What can they do to clear the browsers or to make totally. it better? Yeah, I love it. Love that you just said, you know, clear your, your cookies. I use my browser usually in private mode because when whenever you type your password and your user account in your browser, it's stored in a part of your computer now. So your information is always there. If I hack your computer, I got through that information. Now I can hack all your accounts. So using uh, incognito or private mode, I, you can just right click into your browser and you'll see it. And the second part is keeping your browser updated. If you see there is an update pending in your browser or in your computer, that's gonna pay you know, big time for you to close those holes because that's what updates do. They close the holes that the programs, the systems um, have. Not different than you fixing a house before you know, you're know you selling it. You wanna repair, you wanna make it look good. So it's the same in your computer. Well, and I think it's really important, just like you said, when you're buying and selling a house, you want to keep making sure that you're confirming that, you know, that was what was really sent by your realtor or by the bank or by the real estate attorney. All of that is really important. I do know that some of my clients just go ahead and get a totally different email for the whole real estate, you know, because it's only it's not forever. And they just have basically a brand new email where they can see very clearly the emails. Would you recommend that? Absolutely. And I actually recommend that for your bank accounts or your financial mm. accounts. So I have multiple emails. So one for social media only, because, you know, if something happened to that email, it's so easy for you to take an action. You don't really have to read the emails. They're going to be more the post, but that will help you. If you have one for your financials and then one for everything else that you sign up, just three, that will be so helpful. So thank you yeah. for bringing that up. I love I, that. Well, I agree. A long time ago, I decided all these places that were going to give you a discount or coupons and, and you're like, wow, they really rigged it so that you actually have to have a real email address. And then I was like, but that doesn't mean it has to be my main email address. And that, exactly. I figured that out a long time ago, just because I can't stand all the junk and the clutter in my email so that was one thing I, I learned a long time ago. And I, I, but I've had, like I said, several clients where they created, and sometimes it was cool because it's also a husband and wife and they have this one joint email yep. together, which is both of them. And th that's all yep. they do is the real estate stuff is in that joint email. Obviously it's only open for a very specific time. Maybe it's a couple months. It could be six months. It could be three months, whatever it is. And, and I found that to be incredibly effective for a variety of reasons, because it also does prompt me to text message them, hey, I sent you an email, blah, blah. And then they're like, oh, and then they have to go over to the other email. So again, it kind of just organically did some of the safety measures that you've already recommended when buying or selling a house. So I am yeah. so grateful. And I know we're just about out of time, but I wanted to talk, to kind of wrap it up a little bit, I wanted to talk about what do you do? Because I know you have an amazing story and your journey and your path it is such an extraordinary one. So what do you do to create yays in every day? Oh, absolutely. I create yays every day um, through my book series, through my children's book series that I actually just Yay! released. And uh, it's so important for kids to learn early how to be cyber savvy and how to have you know develop that awareness that you you know your grandma taught you um, Jennifer so I have to uh, use the fairy tales and convert them into cyber stories so we're doing that in English and also in Spanish and mm -hmm. my goal for this year will be publishing 15 books and you can find them at sandraestock.com or you can go to my website sandraestock.com or happilyevercyber.com and yes thank you so much and I such a, a privilege to be with you Jennifer you're amazing and yay that um, we get together to do this show yay and 
I would love to do some other stuff with your children's books because I do. I feel so amazingly blessed um, when you when you decide to create something modern and you've done such amazing stuff. And thank you so much for being a guest today. It's such a blessing. Thank you, Sandra. So let's say yay together as we go off the air, okay? Absolutely. Three, two, one. Yay! <laughs> Hi, I'm Jack Canfield. You may know me as the co-author of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. And if you want more help in getting from where you are to where you want to be, I want to encourage you to listen to the Jennifer Hammond Show.